Hello there. How's it going? Good to see you back again. What have I got here? What's this he's waving at us now? Well, I mean, this will maybe give it away a bit. What this is, is, uh, and I mean, I'm trying, but you know, I'm handling this with a bit of care, like as if it might be fragile. It's not, it's not fragile. It's not anything uh, extremely important. Unless, of course, you're in the whiskey business, uh, to whom it is quite important. What this is, is a hand-cut uh, peat briquette, I suppose you would call it. That's what they call them over here. It's peat briquette. Uh, turf, some people call it turf around the, the country people. Uh, what is peat uh, for the uninitiated? Peat is like oil and coal is a fossil fuel uh, which comes from the earth and really what it is is old vegetation uh, which basically over uh, a period of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years basically gets goes further and further down the table on the, the land and uh, when dug out and dried it burns at a very high heat and uh, creates a very distinctive smoke which is also which is used then for the making of this so we'll get into that as to how that is done so we'll do that first before we get into our whiskey so there you are peat and um, that peat itself was actually dug out of a bog about two miles from here and uh, it was my brother-in-law himself and his family that did it. They do this every year. And I'll actually link uh, a video in up here somewhere uh, of a video that he put on himself uh, of his family uh, digging peat. <clears throat> and what happens is they dig it. Most peat's probably machine cut nowadays and uh, it's dried. And once dried, as I say, then it burns, burns well, burns long, and creates a very, very distinctive uh, smell. And that smell is, if you want to know what the smell of a peat fire is like, get yourself a glass of our bag, as I've done here, and get your nose into it, and you will know what a peat fire smells like. That's peat, done and dusted. This is a, a peated whiskey. And we're moving to Isla because we're still going round our whistle stop tour of uh, the regions of Scotch whisky. So we're moving to Isla, and Isla is generally known for peated whiskies. They they would be the one that people would sort of tend to gravitate to when you talk about peated whiskies because they do tend to be quite some of them tend to be quite heavily peated. This is a <coughs> Art Beg, ten year old, from the island of Isla, over there, right on the west coast of Scotland, stuck out there, almost in the Irish Sea, and uh, it's owned by the uh, same people as Glenmore, and it's, it's LVMH, and it, it started commercial production in 1815, did Ardbeg distillery, and it stopped the start of late in the 20th century, uh, and then we're back into full production in the late 1990s and they produce a, a lot of i just know this from you know being in no whiskies and drinking whiskies they produce an awful lot of knowledge statement whiskies but this is one of their uh this is pretty much their core range and the one that most people know the 10 year old and a very very good whiskey it is in my opinion it is bottled at 46 percent it is non-chill filtered. Now, for some reason, and this has been debated among whiskey people, they don't state whether there's colouring added or not. I personally would say no. I mean, to look at that, if there's colouring added, there's so little added, especially after 10 years, that, you know, there's so little added that why would you... I honestly don't know why they uh, they even avoid, and you know maybe I don't know, 
whether there's colour in it or not. But they don't mention it, so I ain't going to go into it. This has been poured for 10-15 minutes, and the cap, I had a cap on the glass. Getting the nose into it, there's a massive phenolic hit, and now that's to be expected. It's peated whiskey. You're going to get what they call a phenolic hit. Phenols, your peat heads and all know, but phenols, it's basically the breakdown of uh, peat smoke, etc, etc. I've said it before, it's all very complicated. Uh, yeah, phenolic hit first off, lots of peat, but it's bright. I talk about bright peat, there's, there's two kinds of peat I would suggest, there's bright peat and an earthy peat. And I often find uh, the likes of uh, Lagavulin 16 is more of an earthy peat, whereas this is a, is a bright peat, it's, it, it's almost sparkly. The peat is there right on top, right's the first thing that hits you, but it's it's the brightness that comes behind it. It's also like a burnt out bonfire, uh, if you imagine just it's just sat there. Old sticks. Not I'm not talking a rubbish bomb, I'm talking a good quality uh, country bonfire. Stick sleeves, that sort of thing. Yeah. Very much so. Apple. Two, not just one apple, I would say there's there's a cooking apple where it's it's quite bitter, but it's also sharp. Uh, yeah, as in, you know, if you if you even took a bite out of a cooking apple before it was, you know, before it was cooked. But there's also like a red apple. There's a, a soft. There's a soft. I always find there's a soft bitterness with a red apple, and especially the nearer you get to the skin of a of a piece of red apple. And lemon, because there is there's an awful lot of bright citrus notes going on here. That bonfire but really is the seems to be the standout. It's an incredibly soft delivery. But then the development becomes bright, sherbety. It's almost you would almost suggest it's fizzy. It's not, but and there's almost a carbonated thing about it. Sherbet sensation in the back of the palate. Sugar, uh, sugary fruit. Not, well, I suppose, yeah, candied fruit. You see, if you if, I understand, I said before, people don't like, peat I find is the great divider. An awful lot of people don't like peat whiskey. So it's understandable. But there's an awful lot to me, as I say, goes on behind peat and most peated whiskies. It's quite light. It's not, you know, it's not terribly oily. There's a slight soapiness of it, but it's not off-putting. It doesn't. Uh, it certainly wouldn't drive you to dislike it. Delicious finish is, um, I'd say, medium, kind of medium length, you know, it doesn't hang around too long. Uh, it's soft, slightly, uh, I would say it's a cinnamon sensation on it, cinnamon burn. Very, very good. Let's try a little water in it and see what I make of that. I have, as I say, taken notes on this. As a matter of fact, I'll give it all a moment. Uh, I can't even remember. It's been quite a while since I did my notes in this. The uh, peat tends to tone down with the water, I think, and the sweetness then comes through. Yeah, this the smokiness. 
Whereas before, if it was like a, a burnt out bonfire that was still smoking quite strongly, this is now a burnt out bonfire the following day where you can still smell burning, but it's not near as strong. And that has changed the palate too to make their the palate becomes sweeter but slightly more earthy, strangely. Which I don't have in my notes. I'm only getting the day. It's, there's a, there is a saccharine thing, you know, where, where it, it, but it sort of pulls back before it becomes a sickeningly sweet. You know, it, it's it's not uh, it's not off putting and doesn't it wouldn't drive you off it. Even the finish seems to have slightly more heat and depth with the water added. Very, yet again, I think I said it in my last review, very honest whiskey. Uh, I often find that there's nothing to hide in a bottle of Art Bag 10. Everything uh, tells you where it's at. It doesn't try to shy away. If you like smoke, if you like Pete, Ardbeg 10 will never disappoint, I think. You know, there's there's more peated whiskies out there, as in they're, they're more heavily peated. But this, I think, is just a good place to keep going back to, to keep returning to, is the Ardbeg 10, because it doesn't overdo it. It's, it's you know, it'll, it'll stay there and, and just be good peated whiskey without trying to be anything else and I would highly recommend it if you like peated whiskey. So that's about that. That is me done on that one. I've got one more to do for my reasons of a Scotch whiskey so it'll be my next review and uh, for now I think that's as much as I'm going to say about our big 10. Cheers! Oh, hold on. <laughs> Reverse. I forgot to I forgot to give it a rating. Uh, I knew there was something else. Nine out of ten. I think it deserves it. Mm. Actually, now going back, that sweetness has that's where the saccharin thing I was talking about really, really does come back. But as I say, stops before it gets singing. That's me. Nine out of ten. Our big ten. Perfect. Cheers. <laughs> Later's. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.